So now the next part of the endocrine system that we want to focus on is the thyroid. So we'll entitle the next flowchart thyroid regulation. We're going to be doing two flowcharts on the thyroid and the first one will be about the regulation and the second one will be about the disorders and problems associated with um, bad regulation or malregulation you could say of the thyroid. So we'll look at the normal first and then the abnormal in the next flowchart. So thyroid regulation can be sort of premised on the idea or an example let's say. In order to understand thyroid regulation, let me give you an example to start off this story of the thyroid. Let's imagine that thyroid hormone, in this example, thyroid hormone levels drop below normal. So there's a specific hormone called thyroid hormone, and those levels drop below normal. This is basically the start of almost every endocrinology story because there's always going to be a stimulus and the stimulus right now is a low level of thyroid hormone. So what's going to happen? We're going to see a hormone cascade pathway just like we established prior. This is a big part of endocrine system study. So what's going to happen is you're going to always start at the super powerful hypothalamus. Hypothalamus will sense this. It will sense that the levels of thyroid hormone are low and it will respond to this by secreting so hypothalamus secretes T for thyroid RH remember RH that's always going to be something produced and secreted by the hypothalamus the specific releasing hormone here is called thyrotropic releasing hormone thyrotropic releasing hormone meaning that because it's tropic it's going to be a hormone that will affect another endocrine gland and that endocrine gland will secrete a different hormone based off of the TRH effect so TRH after it's secreted will go directly into the blood specifically I'll tell you the portal vein and through the portal vein it will then encounter its employee of the month, the anterior pituitary that always listens to its hypothalamus boss. The anterior pituitary senses that TRH is here, thyrotropic releasing hormone. So the anterior pituitary is going to then secrete its version of the thyroid hormone necessary to combat this example or this problem up here. And it secretes TSH, thyroid simulating hormone. And I'm going to tell you that the thyroid stimulating hormone is also a tropic hormone, meaning that it also is going to travel through the blood from the brain to the thyroid gland. And it stimulates the thyroid gland. And once it stimulates the thyroid gland, okay, let me write this down, we are going to then have a direct response. The thyroid gland is also an endocrine gland that is then going to be stimulated by this tropic hormone called the TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So what happens at, at this thyroid gland? Let's take a look over here. So look at this cascade, very complex, but I think it's a very intuitive cascade that we have here. So now we're at the thyroid gland. So what can we say about this structure, this endocrine gland, and how it relates to the overall endocrine system? The thyroid gland is something that uh, is actually uh, quite familiar to you. You can probably have a general idea of where it is because it's specifically going to be two lobes near the ventral. So that's the front. So if you uh, sort of look at your front-facing self, this is going to be where it is. There are going to be two lobes near the ventral surface of the trachea. So we're talking about the neck region. Um, you can most of the time uh, have a general idea of where thyroid glands are. Okay, so there are two lobes of them near your ventral surface of the trachea. Think near the neck. Okay, so now what are we going to do at the thyroid gland upon getting the stimulation from the thyroid stimulating hormone which was then caused by the thyroid releasing hormone? So what are we going to do? How are we going to combat this low level of thyroid hormone? Thyroid gland will then secrete, its job is to secrete two hormones derived from, two hormones derived from both tyrosine, tyrosine and also from iodine, okay? So these are two chemical compounds that are going to be the basis of the two hormones that the thyroid gland makes. And the thyroid gland particularly makes something called T3 and also T4. 
T3 has the name triiodothyronine, and that's going to be because T3 has three iodines in its structure, whereas T4, which is otherwise known as thyroxin, it has four iodines in its structure. Again, why have these been secreted? Because the thyroid hormone levels have dropped below normal and the hypothalamus caused this cascade pathway that has led to the thyroid gland, which makes more thyroid hormone because the levels are low right now. Those thyroid hormones are T3 and T4. So what do these two guys, T3 and T4, do? What is their job? What do they regulate, essentially? So let's look at T3 and T4 in a little bit more detail after understanding this mechanistic response to this stimulus of low thyroid hormone. T3 and T4, what are their effects is the first question that we're going to answer. The effects are as follows. They stimulate. I think these are very important hormones because they can actually access every single cell somehow, some way because they stimulate cell metabolism. Every single cell within your body has to metabolize. It has to break down and it has to build up certain molecular chemical compounds and components. So essentially T3 and T4 are going to have all, in some way at least, all cells being their target cells. Think how powerful T3 and T4 are then. Think how important they are in terms of overall metabolic regulation within the whole body. These two thyroid hormones do that. And of course, they can't work unless their, their boss, let's say their superior, the anterior pituitary, is telling them to work with TSH. And that their boss can't work unless the anterior pituitary is being told to make TSH by its boss, the hypothalamus, which is TRH. So look at this cascade, understand and appreciate the complexity associated with it. So in addition to the cell metabolism, if that didn't uh, do enough for you, let's say, the thyroid, the T3 and T4 also maintains some important things like blood pressure, like BP for blood pressure, like heart rate, that's kind of important, and also muscle tone. So this is these are three very important parts of being a human and being success, successfully alive, and T3 and T4 are part of that process. And to top it all off, just to summarize or sort of conclude the effects, T3 and T4 also regulates uh, several digestive and reproductive functions. Digestive plus repro functions. So these are truly some very all-purpose hormones coming from the thyroid gland as a result of a TSH secretion, which is a result of a TRH secretion. So those are our major effects. And uh, again, T3 and T4, these are classic examples of a negative feedback loop. Hormones that are on a negative feedback loop, as we sort of illustrated in this initial example, what we imagine is that if there is enough, let's imagine there is enough now, because we've done this thyroid, this process to make more thyroid gland hormones, and let's say there is enough T3 and T4 in the blood, what is going to be the negative feedback loop response? This is going to then because the blood is constantly being in contact with the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus will sense whether or not T3 and T4 is there. This is going to be, because it's there, it blocks TRH, thyroid releasing hormone, uh, release from the hypothalamus because it's there, so there's no need to release it, right? From the hypothalamus, which then directly will then block the TSH release from TSH, I'll say release to make it consistent from the anterior pituitary, aka a negative feedback loop, reducing the stimulus. Okay, we don't need any more thyroid hormone because we've made enough of it in the blood. It's circulating and thus we will not make TRH and we will not make TSH. We will not make more T3 and T4 since it's at a sufficient amount. And that covers our first look at thyroid regulation. We now know basically the normal way that a thyroid works. Now there are actually a lot of disorders associated with thyroid function, which we'll look at in the next flowchart.